Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Yesterday was the reveal of the Enter the World of Cafe video, which was, well, a rather small trailer just showcasing the units in action a little bit. Even then, it didn't really show us too much. However, I've been watching the trailer over and over and there is one thing we need to talk about as really it demands a bit of questioning. I'm of course referring to the following clip. Are unmoving like the mountain. We will not. So this looked and ended up being a defensive spell. Keep in mind that we've seen something like this in the High Elf trailer for Warhammer 2, and then it was just theatrics. It wasn't actually a spell. Why this is both exciting and a little bit concerning is that this is a new spell type which will be available in Warhammer 3. The spell itself can be found in the Law of Yin, one of two new spell laws available to Cafe. And the spell itself is called Missile Mirror, so what it does is it redirects projectiles back to the enemy units that were firing originally to that area. This is pretty cool because we're able to then fire back projectiles. It's really interesting as many people have been asking for something like this for quite some time. Mechanically, I'm assuming that it will only work for one round of projectiles thrown at you or else it will be absolutely overpowered, but we're going to have to wait and see as to how this actually works. We only get to see it in action, not any stats or anything, like a lot of other stuff in Warhammer 3. Now, the reason why this is exciting is that we haven't really seen defensive spells implemented into the Total War Warhammer series. Sure, there is like buffs and so on, but even then, it's a buff, it's basic, it's not really the defensive capabilities that we were looking for, in fact, we were looking for something like this. It's likely that Kislev will also have something of this nature too, but we haven't really seen anything of the other lore of Kislev, we've just seen one of the ice laws. And while we haven't seen the three demonic spell laws just yet, given their nature and how they worked on the tabletop, it's very likely that their spell laws are going to focus around the same of Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, which is the main reason of this video. Kislev has been reworked because of Warhammer the Old World. Cafe has been rewritten from the ground up to fit for Warhammer the Old World too. And yes, we all know pretty much they're going to be the Merry Sioux factions of Warhammer 3 as they already seem quite overpowered. There's a lot of stuff here which just shows off some red flags to me, where likely they will have an incredible power level when compared to loads of other races and factions which have had loads of DLC to build them up. I mean, let's just be honest here, Cafe, as far as we've seen already, just screams, we've got everything, we've got different types of spell laws which are very powerful, and we've got characters that can transform into dragons. But let's not talk about the rosters, we'll save that when we finally get gameplay in what feels to be 20 years time, but instead, let's talk about magic. Defensive spells, as I said before, are very much requested, and it's going to cafe when really we should be having it with a load of other different races. Many spells which have been implemented into the Total War Warhammer series should, in fact, be defensive spells, yet they were completely different in the whole aspect of the game, which is absolutely confusing as many of these spells mostly could work as a debuff, yet they have this weird, different sense mechanically when it comes to the game. Keep in mind my reference to these spells is from my knowledge of the tabletop, as I was a highly competitive player, so let's look at some spells here which definitely needs to get a change. If they're going to start giving all the new factions Mary Sue laws of magic, well some of the older laws need to get a little bit changed up. Let's look at Howling Warp Gale. Now yes, I know a lot of people are sick of anything happening to the Skaven, loads of buffs and so on, but keep in mind that tabletop wise I was a competitive Skaven player, so this is the best place of reference for myself for this video. So what does it do in Total War Warhammer? Well, in Total War Warhammer, it's a ground spell. Essentially, it just puts a flying target onto the ground. I mean, yeah, woo. Sure, it stops the monster from moving, but keep in mind that obviously the Skaven themselves are so heavily range-powered that you generally don't need to stop a flying monster because by the time it gets to you, it's either dead or close enough to being dead. When is the last time you actually used a spell rather than just mucking about? There are better laws of magic and there are better spells in the Law of Ruin. But let's compare it to the Howling Warp Gale of the tabletop. 
what this actually did was it grounded all flying units throughout the whole map. They were still able to move, however they weren't able to move as quickly because they were grounded, and all missile weapons for the enemy had a minus one to hit penalty. This was absolutely amazing as obviously range firepower has always been a meta, not only just in Total War but also the tabletop. Now obviously a direct translation would be absolutely impossible because well yeah it's a very strong spell and it's actually a favorite when you're playing against say high elves or wood elves or pretty much anything with a lot of range in the tabletop. Instead the interpretation as a defensive spell was done rather poorly where it would just stop a flying entity when it could have been with two effects. It could stop a flying entity or it could have been applied to say for example a ranged unit and have their accuracy reduced rather than map wide because map wide would be well yeah too horrendous. But you see this is what defensive spells more or less looked like back in the day and yet they're not in the game and it's not just the Skaven. Now let's look directly to the High Elves for example as the majority of their spell lore in Total War Warhammer 2 is quite aggressive it's actually really interesting as that's not how the spell lore played in the tabletop. They had access to one specific spell which we don't have access to just yet in the game. The spell is known as Walk Between Worlds and what it does is it gets one of your units, gives them the ethereal special rule for a certain amount of time and also allows them to make another move. Now yeah this might not sound too exciting but believe me this was a very good spell as not only would it allow you to move a little bit extra to get closer to the enemy and so on, but it would make you ethereal. Ethereal itself was an incredible rule back in the tabletop, as that would mean that only magical weapons can actually hurt you, and well, you know, that's actually quite strong. In Total War, however, what ethereal does is gives you 70% physical resistance, sometimes causing fear and terror, and even giving you the Strider special rule, which is also pretty good too. This spell was so popular on the tabletop because, you know, elves are squishy, and it would have been helpful for Total War Warhammer because, again, elves are squishy. The moment you get into close combat with them, unless they're, for example, Phoenix Guard, they'll start dying out quick. We're not going to go through every lore of magic because obviously that would keep us here for hours on end, but the idea is simple. Why is it the fact that Cafe is going to get such a powerful defensive spell? Presumably Kislev will also have stuff like that too, and yet the other races are kind of lacking. And yes, I am fully aware that this is not currently one of the biggest issues that the Total War series currently has, but we have to take into account that magic is still very important in this series. What bothers me is that so far from what we've been told, granted there's nothing coming out, no information regarding gameplay or anything, it just kind of looks like we're going to see a massive power creep, where Kislev and Cafe might be one of, if not the strongest factions in the series, and that's a tad disappointing because while some people don't want to hear this, they're going to be base game races, they're going to get DLC in the future, which means that at the beginning they should still be fairly weak. Or else the Order Tide won't be the biggest issue here, it will just be the Kislev Tide or the Cafe Tide. And I don't think anyone wants that. I'm not trying to be negative, it's just you've got to keep in mind that so far everything that's been shown, Corn is kind of lackluster, Kislev and Cafe are kind of strong. We need to be shown more because right now the drip feed is leading us to think, wow, these are going to be very powerful factions and they're only going to get stronger with more DLC. I don't know, we're going to have to wait and see. Let's just hope the Creative Assembly just talk about this and showcase because magic is very powerful. Magic is very, very powerful and I don't want to see these guys getting too strong. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our Patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough.
And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.